Hello everyone. In one of the previous videos, we have discussed about the different modes of heat transfer that is conduction, convection and radiation. In this video, we will discuss about the different laws of heat transfer on which the subject rests. Every subject that you study in engineering science like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics or heat transfer or any other subject, they rest on certain laws and the laws are broadly classified into fundamental and subsidiary. So the fundamental laws are those which form the basis of the subject and which must always be satisfied whenever we are solving for any situation in the subject. The fundamental laws that we will have to satisfy are the law of conservation of mass, Newton's laws of motion and the laws of thermodynamics. The validity of fundamental laws rests on the fact that it has never been disproved by any evidence of experimental results. It means that there is not a single event in which the fundamental laws are not satisfied by experimental results. Let us say we have certain system which is related with heat transfer and we are analyzing that system or we are performing certain experiments and we have experimental results with us. So these experimental results they will always follow the fundamental laws that I have enlisted here. So if any of the system while you are analyzing it theoretically if it is not satisfying any of these laws when particular I am talking about heat transfer then this particular system will definitely not exist. Now moving towards subsidiary laws. So subsidiary laws are those which might be empirical in nature which are based on experimental evidence. It means that there are certain experiments you are performing and after performance of the experiments you are identifying that how the different parameters are related with each other. How with the change of certain parameters how what how in what way and how the other parameters are changing. So by doing that by doing these experiments you can formulate a mathematical relationship in between them and this mathematical relationship which is based on the experimental results it is known as empirical equation and the laws which are having such a kind of empirical nature they are known as subsidiary laws. So the laws which are subsidiary in nature that we are going to deal in heat transfer are Fourier's law of heat conduction, Newton's law of cooling and the laws of thermal radiation. So we are not focusing on fundamental laws because all these laws you have studied before in thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, physics and that's why we are not focusing on fundamental laws. And now we are going to focus on the subsidiary laws. So first we will consider Fourier's law of heat conduction. So let us start with an example. So let us consider a cold drink can, aluminium cold drink can which is left in a room. So a cold drink can left in a warm room it will uh, warm up to the temperature uh, which is as that of the room as a result of heat transfer from warm room to the cold drink through the aluminium can by conduction. So let us say I am focusing on the wall of this can a very small portion on this wall I am focusing on and I am exaggerating this wall. So I am exaggerating and zooming in so what I am showing here is the same uh, aluminium can wall I am showing which is having very small thickness but in exaggerated view I am showing some uh, finite thickness here. So this thickness is a delta x. The left face temperature and right face temperature of this can uh, is a T1 and T2. So T1 is the temperature of the surface which is open to room air. So this is the surface which is in contact with the room air and T2 is the temperature of the surface which is in contact with the cold ring which is present within the can. So now I am giving uh, you the three dimensional view of the same thing. So same wall having a thickness of delta x and now I am talking about temperatures T1 and T2. So left face of the wall, so this is the left face of the wall, it is in contact with the room air. So this room air it is having higher temperature, it means that it will have some higher average kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the room air it is shown here so you can see the movement. Now compare this movement with the movement of cold drink which is present within the can. So which is in contact with the right face of the wall that I have shown here. So now if you compare this movement with the movement that I have shown sometime before. So the movement of molecules here it is very less as compared to this molecules movement and hence we can say that temperature here 
of the room air it will be greater as compared to temperature of the cold ring and hence what happens is this air molecules they will bump onto this solid surfaces and hence they will transfer their kinetic energies to this solid surfaces because of which we can say that the temperature t1 of the face of, of the surface which is in contact with the uh, room air it will have temperature t1 and t2 is the temperature of the surface which is in contact with the cold ring so from this we can conclude that t1 will be greater than t2 and hence there will be a transfer of energy in the form of heat from the room to the cold ring and the same thing i have shown here in the two dimensional view now this heat it transfers to through certain area and this area it is nothing but a which is shown here so this surface it is nothing but the area through which the heat will get transferred from the warm region to the cold region through the thickness of this aluminium can and it will occur by the mode of conduction now when fourier performed experiments he uh, the experiments i have shown that the rate of heat transfer q it means the transfer of energy per unit time from this warmer region to the colder region which is denoted by small q it is dependent on different factors so it is dependent on factor like temperature difference so t1 and t2 they are having certain temperature difference because of which heat is flowing so t1 minus t2 is the temperature difference on which this rate of heat transfer depends in addition to this the rate of heat transfers also depends on area so these are nothing but the facts which are uh, i'm ta i'm uh, telling you through the experiments that fourier performed so this is nothing but the area we are considering so if we are increasing the area then rate of heat transfer will increase because it will get more surface area to transfer its heat in addition to this if i increase the thickness so when i'm increasing the thickness then what will happen is the heat will take more time to move from this phase to the increased thickness that i have here and because of which the rate of heat transfer will get decreased and now with the use of this we can give some dependence between the rate of heat conduction and the different parameters just we have discussed so the rate of heat conduction it will be directly proportional to area so as area increases the rate of uh, heat conduction will increase it is also directly proportional to temperature difference if i have more temperature difference t1 minus t2 then more energy will get transferred but if i increase thickness then what will happen is the rate of energy transfer will decrease so this is nothing but the dependence we can get from this so this is nothing but a kind of equation which is given by fourier and now this equation will write in numerical form so q conduction is directly proportional to area temperature difference delta t and the thickness delta x and now if we remove the proportionality so if i'm uh, removing this proportionality here so after removal of this proportionality we have to introduce some constant of proportionality so the constant of proportionality k here it is known as thermal conductivity so the thermal conductivity it is a measure of the ability of a material to conduct the heat and now let us say in the limiting case in which the delta x approaches zero it means that this delta x which is the thickness of this slab or thickness of the wall it is approaching to zero it means it is becoming a plane so when delta x approaches to the zero the same equation it will become in a differential form so delta t by delta x in the case delta x tending to zero it will become dt by dx so dt by dx it is nothing but what change in temperature with respect to change in x so as x is changing continuously in the in this positive direction so there will be certain change in temperature and we know that here we have higher temperature here we have lower temperature so with increase in x the temperature is decreasing and this is nothing but known as a negative temperature gradient so dt by dx value will be definitely negative and hence i have kept here or i have put here one negative sign and this negative sign it is here because heat flows in a direction of decreasing temperature and the temperature gradient becomes negative and to make this equation positive to have the rate of heat transfer always positive in the direction of its flow we are introducing one negative sign here so that this negative and the temperature gradient value which will be negative so this two negative it will give you this value to be positive and hence we can say that the rate of heat transfer due to conduction it will be positive in its positive x direction so this is related with the fourier's law of heat conduction 
when uh, fourier performed his experiments he performed the experiments for different materials and from this he identified that uh, the different materials will have different value of thermal conductivity so different materials will have different abilities to transfer the energy so let us say here uh, two slabs i have which are same in thickness and temperature difference across this slab are same so one is made of copper and another is made of silicon so he observed that the rate of heat transfer per unit area it is greater in case of copper as compared to silicon and from this he concluded that the different materials will have different abilities to conduct the heat which is known as thermal conductivity now moving towards newton's law of cooling so these are nothing but the two different modes of convection uh, through which the heat transfer will take place by this mode that is natural convection and forced convection now let us consider a solid surface which is at a temperature of ts so this is the solid surface having temperature of ts over which a fluid so let us say air or water uh, at some temperature tf is present so it is in contact with the solid surface and consider that the temperature of the solid surface it is greater as compared to temperature of the fluid and hence heat will flow from the solid surface so this arrow it indicates that the flow of heat it is from solid surface into the fluid and heat is going to flow from solid surface to the fluid and newton performed his experiments uh, related with spheres so he worked on cooling of spherical bodies that's why the equation it is known as newton's law of cooling and when newton performed his experiments he came to certain conclusion that which is nothing but the newton's law of cooling and it says that the rate of heat conduction uh, sorry the rate of heat convection is proportional to the area of the solid surface and it is also proportional to the temperature difference between the solid surface and fluid so writing it in numerical form q convection is directly proportional to surface area a solid surface area a multiplied by the temperature difference ts minus tf removing the proportionality sign we will have some constant of proportionality so the constant of proportionality taken here it is small h and this h it is known as convection heat transfer coefficient so this is nothing but the equation which is the rate of heat convection either from solid surface to the fluid or fluid to the solid it is nothing but the equation which is valid for temperature of the solid surface greater than fluid if i have temperature of fluid greater than solid then what will happen the energy transfer will be from fluid to the solid surface and in that case the convection heat transfer equation will be h a t f minus t s so notice here that note here that here we have t s minus t f and here we have t f minus t s it is because in the first case surface temperature is greater as compared to fluid that's why i have taken t s minus t f in the second case the fluid temperature is greater than t s that's why i have taken t f minus t s so i have do, done all this thing to have this rate of heat transfer quantity to be positive and to have the convection heat transfer positive in its uh, direction of flow we are writing it either it as uh, t s minus t f or t f minus t f and when newton performed his experiments uh, he thought that h is some constant quantity but this h is a very complex quantity so after exhaustive experiments he understood that this coefficient that is heat transfer coefficient it depends on different parameters like it depends on properties of fluids rho mu cp it also depends on shape and nature of the surface whether the shape is spherical flat plate or any other shape as well as it depends on what velocity with which the fluid is moving and these are nothing but the different representative values of h for different fluids like gases and liquids and for different modes that is free or forced convection now the last law it is known as stephen boltzmann law so if we have a surface which is at an absolute temperature t then that surface will emit the thermal radiation so, and the maximum rate of emission is proportional to the area and fourth power of absolute temperature of the surface so q by a it is known as rate of heat transfer per unit area it is also named as emissive power so stephen boltzmann law it states that the emissive power or the rate of heat transfer or the rate of emission per unit area it is proportional to the fourth power of absolute temperature so rate of emission per unit area which is also known as emission power it is directly proportional to fourth power of the absolute temperature and 
this is written again in a mathematical form and we have re uh, removed the proportionality here and I got Q by A equals to sigma T to the power 4. Here the sigma it is known as Stephen Boltzmann constant and its value is 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8. Thank you.